Now we are going to get started with the uh, rudiments of binomial theorem in the class today. But before that, uh, a quick crasher on a few requirements towards binomial theorem. Uh, the factorial notation if n is a non negative integer, then n factorial, or sometimes also written this way as n factorial, is defined as 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 up to n for n belonging to the set of natural numbers. That's n factorial. That's the definition of n factorial. Product of the first n natural numbers. Now, very clearly, then by the same definition, 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 up to n minus 1 would be n minus 1 factorial, right? So, n factorial could also be written as n minus 1 factorial into n. That's n factorial. Very clearly, then 1 factorial would be 1, 2 factorial would be 2, 3 factorial would be 6. 4 factorial would be 24, 5 factorial would be 120 and so on and so forth, right? Although I have defined factorial only for n belonging to the set of natural numbers, but I take one exception to that to customarily define what is called 0 factorial. The moment I put n equal to 1 in this, right? So then this becomes like a 1 factorial equals 0 factorial into 1, leading to 0 factorial being defined as 1. 0 factorial, in fact, per force is defined to be 1. Now, another symbolism with which you might want to breed familiarity NCR. I will give it uh, a combinatorial feel later on, but for the time being, I define it as an algebraic entity, NCR, simply stating it to be n factorial by n minus r factorial into r factorial. That's NCR. NCR is defined to be n factorial by n minus r factorial into r factorial where r could be 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. And n is a natural number. n is a natural number. Now in this, if you replace r by r minus n, n minus r, if you replace r by n minus r, replace r by n minus r, then you get n c n minus r equals n factorial divided by Replace this r by n minus r. We replace this r by n minus r. This will become r factorial and this will become n minus r factorial. So, this will become r factorial. This would be n minus r factorial. Very clearly then, ncr is the same as nc n minus r. Right. Given this definition of NCR, an important relationship that we are going to use all along would be NCR plus NCR minus 1 is N plus 1 CR. NCR plus NCR minus 1 is N plus 1 CR. You will be able to establish this independently from the definition, but for the time being, just remember this NCR plus NCR minus 1 is N plus 1 CR is a very commonly used 
relationship. Few things before I get into binomial theorem, which I want you to understand and relate to, is the business that little bit of business of polynomials, although you are inadequately uh, placed right now to understand polynomials in their true spirit. Just a very basic understanding of what polynomials are. Essentially, a polynomial of degree n and x is a naught x power n plus a1 x power n minus 1 plus a2 x power n minus 2 plus plus a n, where a naught is not equal to 0. This is a polynomial of degree n and x. If a naught becomes equal to 0, and a1 is not 0, then it will become a polynomial of degree n minus 1 in, in x. Hmm? Alpha is said to be a root of the polynomial. Alpha is said to be a root of the polynomial. If this expression, that is p n x, vanishes at x equal to alpha. At x equal to alpha, if this vanishes, then alpha is a root of the polynomial. That means the value of this expression at x equal to alpha must be 0. Then alpha is a root of the polynomial. That means replace x by alpha and if this expression vanishes, which is written as p and alpha equal to 0, then alpha must be a root of the polynomial. Now, if this expression vanishes at x equal to alpha, if this expression vanishes at x equal to alpha, then x minus alpha must be a factor of the expression. I mean, let's say if I have a polynomial x squared minus 5x plus 6. It's a polynomial of degree 2 in x. See, it vanishes at x equal to 2. So, x minus 2 is a factor of this expression. It vanishes at x equal to 3. So, x minus 3 is a factor of this expression. That means, this expression could be written as x minus 2 into x minus 3. So, if alpha, in this case 2, is a root of the polynomial, then x minus alpha must necessarily be a factor of the expression, factor of the polynomial. Hmm? Now, every time you are factorizing an expression, you are actually producing an identity. Every time you factorize an expression, you are not producing an equation. x squared minus 5x plus 6, written as x minus 2 into x minus 3, is not an equation. It is an Identity, it's an identity. What is an identity? True for all values indiscriminately. It's a statement, it's a statement for all values of x indiscriminately. What's an equation? True for infinite finite values of x. Huh? An equation is true for infinite values of x. Finite values of x. Don't talk of e quadratic or non quadratic. What's an equation? Yes. An equation is a statement to be true for finite or infinite values of x, but not indiscriminately all values of x. For example, you know, if I said x plus 1 equal to 0, this is an equation for one value of x, which is minus 1, right? 
x squared minus 2x plus 1 to 0. It's true for two values of x that are coincident. So, these are equations. These are equations. They are true for finite values of x. Finite values of x. These statements are true for finite values of x. But you could have had an equation, a statement which could be true for finite values of x. A statement that could be infinite values of x. So, if I said sin x equal to 0, it's true for infinite values of x. It's true for x equal to 0, x equal to pi, x equal to 2 pi, x equal to 3 pi, x equal to 4 pi, minus pi, minus 2 pi, minus 3 pi. It's true for infinite values of x, but not for all values of x. For example, if you put x equal to 30 degrees, then this will not. Right? So you could have had you, an equation could be a statement which could be true for infinite values of x, but not all values of x. This is an equation which is true only for finite values of x. This is an e equation which is true for infinite values of x, but not all, all values. values of x. But an identity is true for all values of x. Right? Now, one way or the other, coming back to the core issue, if alpha is a root of the polynomial, x minus alpha must be a factor of the polynomial. Right? Now, write down a polynomial of degree n in x, a polynomial of degree n in x exactly n roots, has exactly n roots. Real or complex, real or complex, distinct or coincident, real or complex, distinct or coincident, a polynomial of degree n in x has exactly n roots, real or complex, distinct or coincident. That means this would vanish, become equal to 0 for exactly n values of x. These n values of x, that is the n roots of this polynomial, could be real. Some of them could be real. Some of them could be complex. Some could be coincident. Some could be coincident. I mean, in this case, x squared minus 2 plus 1. It has two coincident roots, x equal to 1 and x equal to 1. Right? x squared plus x plus 1, if this is a polynomial, it has Look at its discriminant b squared minus 4x. Okay. So the two roots of this are complex. Are complex. So the roots of a polynomial could be real, it could be complex, they could be coincident, and so on and so forth. Now write down if the coefficients of the polynomial are all real numbers, if the coefficients of the polynomial are all real numbers. Complex roots, if any, complex roots, if any, would occur in pairs, would occur that is, say, if alpha equal to a plus ib turns out to be a complex root of this polynomial. See, I am assuming that these AIs are all real numbers. If these AIs, their coefficients are all real numbers, and if this polynomial is found to have a root of the form A plus IB, which is a complex root, I square root of minus 1, which is a complex root, then you know that if this polynomial is vanishing alpha, it will also vanish for some alpha bar defined as A minus IB. 
polynomial of degree n and n with real coefficients is found to a plus ib, then you can be guaranteed that it will have another complex root which would be a minus ib. Right? So, complex will always occur in pair. You, I, I'll, I'll spare to prove that, but come to that. I'll come to that. Don't worry about it. It's, it's a very simple thing. Now, uh, write down. If all coefficients, if one or more coefficients are themselves found to be complex, if one or more coefficients How do you prove that it has at least? Oh, well, any have at least one root that could be complex. Uh, how do you know that it will vanish for a, at least one complex value? Okay, I will come to that also. Just give me some time. Let me go past the basics. This also is not an issue, but let me go past the basics. Well, any expression will vanish for real or complex. But I will give you a mathematical proof also for that. But you know, that will be digressing too much into the unnecessary domains right now. But we will come to that also. Right. Let me go past the basics first. Uh, so, coming back to Namu, if you find that there is at least one coefficient, if one finds right now, if one finds that at least one coefficient is not real, if one finds that at least one coefficient is not real, then occurrence of complex roots in pairs, occurrence of complex roots in pairs. is not guaranteed, is not guaranteed. Right? I mean, if you find that one of the coefficients, for example, uh, A naught is found to be uh, I, then you can't be sure that complex roots, if this polynomial is complex roots, they will necessarily occur in pairs. That you cannot be sure of. Only in the event, all the coefficients are real numbers. In the event, all the coefficients are real numbers, you can be sure of complex roots occurring in pairs. Now, write down. If the coefficients, in addition to being real, if the coefficients, in addition to being real, are also found to be rational, are also found to be rational, then irrational roots, if any, then irrational roots, if any, will also occur in pairs, will also occur in pairs. What I mean to say is, see, real numbers can be or irrational, right? And if you find that these coefficients are real, but they are also rational. Then you can be sure that if this has a certain irrational root, for example, if this is found to have a root 2 plus root 3, which is an irrational root, then in the event it has a root 2 plus root 3, it will also have a root 2 minus root 3. I am not establishing this right now. I want you to know all of this. It is not difficult to prove all of this, but we will we'll come to it when the time is right. For the time being, I at least want you to know all of this. So at least get started with things. All right. So if the coefficients are all rational numbers, 
And if one root is found to be irrational, let's say 2 plus root 3, then you can be sure that there is also a root which is 2 minus root 3. Right? This is, this is occurrence of irrational roots in pairs provided all the conditions rational numbers. Down. Even one coefficient is found to be if even one coefficient is found to be irrational, then occurrence of irrational roots in pairs, then occurrence of irrational roots in pairs. is not guaranteed, is not guaranteed. Which means, let's say, if A0 is found to be root irrational number, and if one roots to be 2 plus root 3, then you that the second one there would be a root 2 minus root right in order that irrational roots occur in pairs you have to make sure that these coefficients are rational numbers that's an important right next If a polynomial of degree n is found to vanish for more than n values of x, for more than n values of x, It will vanish, then it will vanish. For all values of x. This is an important statement in the sense that if this is a polynomial of degree n and x, right? This one. And it's found to vanish for x equal to alpha 1, x equal to alpha 2, x equal to alpha n x equal to alpha n plus 1. These are n values, more than n values of x. If it's found to vanish for more than n values of x, it will vanish for all values of x. It will vanish for all values of x, which would imply that p n x equal to 0 will no longer be an equation, it will be an identity. p n x equal to 0 then would not be an equation, it would be an identity. Since this is not a very formal class on polynomials, you know, I am not establishing everything. For a beginner, beginner level, hello, hello. By and by, we'll 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 uh, go past all of this in lot more detail. But uh, at time t equal to zero, this is what I want you to know. So, this then becomes an identity if a polynomial is found to have more than n, which means p n x equal to 0 means a naught x power n plus a 1 x power n minus 1 plus plus a n equal to 0 will no longer be an equation. It will be an identity. It will be 0 for all values of x. And this can happen. This come equal to 0 for all values of x if and only if a naught equal to a 1 equal to a 2 equal to a n each equal to 0 when all the coefficients are 0 when all the coefficients are 0 theoretically that is what it means. This equal to 0 for all values of x only if a naught a 1 a 2 a n are all identically 0. That's when this would happen. Then you you would you would you would come up to me and argue. Then it's not a polynomial of degree n. Yes, it will not be, but it will be like a deceptive polynomial in X in a in a loose loosely speaking manner. 
will not be a polynomial in x in the sense it will be like <coughs> a, b, for example all right i mean to begin with to begin with it looks like a polynomial of degree 2 in x right but if a equal to minus b then it will become identically equal to 0 so prime f aside it looks like a polynomial but otherwise it's an identity that means see this is a polynomial of degree 2 as long as a is not equal to minus b but the moment a becomes equal to minus b this polynomial becomes an identity it becomes identically equal to 0 right Now, if this polynomial, polynomial has n roots, say alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha n, these are the n roots of this polynomial. Uh, it would have a factor x minus alpha 1, it would have a factor x minus alpha 2, it would have a factor x minus alpha n would be a factor. Right. Now, in order that this could be equal to this, you would have to make sure that coefficient equal powers are equal on both sides. If two polynomials are identical, you know, when I say two polynomials are identical, then coefficients of equal powers on both sides must be the same. Coefficient of x to power 10 on one side must be equal to coefficient of x power 10 on the other side. Coefficient of x power 4 on one side must be equal to coefficient of x power 4 on the other side. Now, this expression cannot be identically equal to this expression. Reason being, coefficient of x power is a naught, x power n, x into x into x into x, which is x power n, is not a naught but 1. You realize on the right hand side, coefficient of x power n is not a naught, is 1. When you multiply this out, you will have x into x into x into x, x power n. And the coefficient is no longer, no longer a naught, but 1. So now, in order that the coefficient of x power n on the left hand side, of x on the right hand side, you multiply this by a naught. Multiply this by a naught. Now, the coefficient of n on the left hand side will be equal to coefficient of x power n on the right hand side. That is what would happen. So, this then would be an identity. This then would be an identity. Right? Clear? Shall I proceed? No, no, no. This is like I know x minus alpha 1 is a factor. I know that x minus alpha 2 is a factor. I know that x minus alpha n is a factor. That's all that I know. It doesn't mean that this would be identically equal to this only. This or this into some constant. This or this into some constant would be an identity. Right? So the constant A naught, which we can observe readily. Hmm? Now, if two polynomials are identical, say p and x, a certain polynomial is identically equal to another polynomial q and x, is identically equal to another polynomial q and x. That means for any value of x, value of this expression, will be equal to the value of this expression for the same value of x. That is when things are said to be identity, right. Let us say p and x is a naught x power n plus a 1 x power n minus 1 plus a 2 x power n minus 2 
plus an. That's p n x. The polynomial p n x is this. And the polynomial q n x is b naught x power n plus b 1 x power n minus 1 plus b 2 x power n minus 2 plus b n. And if these polynomials are identical, are identical, that means the value that this assumes for x is the value that this assumes for the same value of x. That's when they are said to be identical polynomials. Which means this minus this would be 0. That means will be 0 for all values of x. will be identically equal to 0 for all values of x. That means, the become 0 for all values of x. That means, this is an identity. This is an identity. Now, this is the nominal of degree n in x. If it becomes 0 for all values of x, means it is becoming 0 for more than n values of x. Right? It can happen. That can happen if all the coefficients are identically 0. That means, this would happen if a naught not a n is b n. That is why when, when you that are identical, you can afford the luxury of equal of equal powers of x on both sides of the polynomial. The fact that we would use time and again. If two polynomials are identical, we can equate the coefficients of equal powers of x on in both the polynomials, right. Now, an expression of relevance is 1 plus x whole to power n, where n is a natural number. That this really means 1 plus x into 1 plus x into 1 plus x how many times yeah. n times now in this the highest power of x that will appear is x into x into x into x into x x power n is the highest power of x that will appear right the lowest power of x that will appear is 1 into 1 into 1 into 1, which is x power 0. So, which means when I multiply these terms out, when I multiply these terms out, I have powers of ranging from x power 0 to x power, right? Which really means that this expression 1 plus x power n. Let us say a naught a 1 x plus a 2 x squared plus a 3 x cubed plus a n x power n. The identity to this. The lowest power of x x 0, the highest power of x x power n, where a naught a 1 a 2 a 3 a n are called undetermined coefficients. So far undetermined. But we are determined to determine these coefficients, right? Right now, these a0, a1, a2 are undetermined coefficients. And 
and this equal to this is not an equation. It's an identity. That means equal to this for one x. Right. So once we know that this would be true for all values of x, we must be able to exploit this condition hmm? to find the values of a naught, a one, a two, a three, a n, etc. Now put x equal to zero on both sides. Put x equal to 0 on both sides, the left hand side becomes 1. The left becomes 1. The right hand side is simply a naught. So a naught is 1. A naught no. Now that we have figured out what a naught is, we want to kick a naught out of the scene. Right? Because now we are trying, we are eyeing a1, a2, etc. We don't want A naught to stick in and make life clumsy for us. What we do is, we differentiate both sides with respect to x. We differentiate both sides with respect to x, A naught would go into oblivion. Because if I differentiate A naught, it's going to be 0. Derivative of A naught would be 0, right? So let's go ahead and differentiate with respect to x, both sides, right? So differentiating once with respect to x would give me Right? That's equal to a1 plus 2a2x plus 3a3x squared, 4a4x cubed. n a n x bar n minus 1. If you differentiate an identity, you will still get an identity. You will still get an identity. Produce. Which will be 1. Derivative of the inside part is 1. Isn't it? Differentiate with respect to 1 plus x. So, outside to inside and then go inside. The derivative of this is 1. Right? <laughs> So, we have another identity at our disposal. Put x equal to 0 again. Put x equal to 0 again. So, if I put x equal to 0, then I get a1 equal to 1. n. a1 equal to n. Yes or no? I get Yes or no? Hmm? Now, I know a1. Why do I need a1 anymore? What do I do? Differentiate again and get a1 out of my sight, right? Get a second time. I end up getting n into n minus 1 into 1 plus x to the power n minus 2. I mean, binomial is very worldly that way. 1 plus x power n minus 2, right? a1 thrown away. 2a2 two two plus 3 into 2, a3 into x plus 4 into 3 into a4 into x squared and so on and so forth. Yes or no? Hmm? Again put x equal to 0. Again have an identity. Put x equal to 0 on both sides. So if I put x equal to 0 on both sides, I end up getting a2e equal to n into n minus 1 by 2. Now, one thing, realize that nc1 is going to be n factorial by n minus 1 factorial by 1 factorial, that's nc1, right, which could be written as n factorial, the numerator n factorial could be written as n into n minus 1 factorial divided by n minus 1 factorial into 1 factorial. So, which is n? Yes or no? I hope all of you understand this. So, this n actually is nc1. This is actually nc1. Now, nc2 is 
n factorial by n minus 2 factorial by 2 factorial, right? <laughs> Which is n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 factorial, yes or no? This is n into n minus 1 factorial? Which is actually n minus 1 into n minus 2 factorial, yes or no? Right? Divided by n minus 2 factorial into 2 factorial, which is n into n minus 1 by 2. So this a2 turns out to be nc2. Yes or no? Hmm? Now I know. So now differentiate. So if I differentiate yet another time, I get n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into 1 plus x power n minus 3. That's equal to 3 into 2 into a3 into a3 plus 4 into 3 into 2 <coughs> into a4 into x and so on so forth. So, a3 ready to be exposed, right? Expose a3 completely, put x <laughs> 0 again. If you put x equal to 0, again, you will find that a3, realize that this 3 into 2 is 3 factorial. 3 into 2 is like 3 into 2 into 1, which is 3 factorial. A3 then is n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 by 3 factorial. Yes or no? I multiply numerator denominator by n minus 3 factorial. I can do that, right? Then what, what becomes of the numerator? n factorial? By n minus 3 factorial, by 3 factorial, yes or no? The numerator has now been rendered n factorial, yes or no? Right? So, this becomes n factorial by n minus 3 factorial by 3 factorial, which is supposed to be nc3, nc3, this by nc3, right? You can keep differentiating, plugging in x equal to 0, differentiate, you will find eventually a1 is nc1, a2 is nc2, ar in general will be ncr and an would be ncn, this is what you would find. So, the coefficients are no longer undetermined, they are not and in fact, as a special case, this 1 actually could be written as nc. Why? Because nc0 is n factorial by n minus 0 factorial by 0 factorial, which is 1, which is 1. So, 1 could be written as nc0, 1 could be written as nc, right? Can I write this? Which then gives me 1 plus x power n. A naught is like a nc1x. NC plus nc2x squared plus nc3x cubed. ncr x power r. ncn x power r. Right? This is the first term. This is the second term. This is the third term. This is the fourth term. This would be the r plus 1th term. This would be the r plus 1th term. Yes or no? See? 
when you have a nc0 you have the this will become the second term this will be the third term this will be the term. so this then would be the r plus 1th term of this expansion so the r plus 1th term is given by ncr x bar r that's the r plus 1th term <laughs> when i expand in ascending powers of x when i expand in ascending powers of x then the r plus 1th term is ncr x bar now see, 0 to n to give you all terms right so r assumes values like 0 to n right so if r assumes values like 0 to n terms are prevalent in the expansion n plus 1 terms number of terms in the expansion of this is n plus 1. Right? Where nc0, nc1, nc2, nc3 are coefficients of the expansion. ncr, these are the coefficients of various powers of x. So, coefficient of x power r will be ncr. Right? Now, a result which I mentioned, NCR is the same as NCN minus R, right? Which means NC0 will be the same as NCN. Yes or no? NC1 would be the same as NCN minus 1. NC2 would be the same as NCN minus 2, and so on and so forth. Yes or no? Right? So now, the first term from the beginning, nc0, that was equal to coefficient of the first term from the end. This is the first coefficient of the first term from the beginning, nc0. This is the coefficient of the first term from the end. And the coefficient of the first term from the beginning is the same as the coefficient of the first term from the end. These are terms equidistant from the beginning and end. Coefficients are equal. Coefficient of Second term from the beginning is NC1. Now, the term just before this would have been what? NC n minus 1 x bar n minus 1. That would have been the term just before this. Now, so this would be the second term from the end. Its coefficient is NC n minus 1. And the coefficient of the second term from the beginning is NC1. Do you realize that NC1 will be the same as NC n minus 1? Hmm? This is NC2, the third term from the beginning. The term before this would be NC n minus 2. They will be equal. So, coefficients, the beginning is the coefficient of the third term from the end. Right? So, this is a peculiarity of this expansion. Expansion. Peculiarity. Coefficients for a regular binomial expansion, coefficients of terms equidistant from the beginning and end would be the same. Now, this of course did not require me to know this result NCR is NCN. I could have actually not known what A0, A1, A2, A3 stand for, and I could have still arrived at this conclusion. I'll tell you how. I actually did. Only as long as I knew this, I could have readily figured out that, well, irrespective of what A0, A1, A2, A3 are, I could have readily figured out that A0 will be equal to AN. A1 would be equal to A n minus 1, would be equal to A n minus 2, without even knowing that these A stand for NCRs. I'll tell you how. Just hmm. first principles I could have obtained that. Observe this. <coughs> even before I arrived at the AR NCRs, I had just this, nothing else. I just this and nothing else. Hmm? This is an identity, right? In this identity, I'll replace x by 1 by x. In this identity, let me replace x by 1 by x, right?
सो देन आई गेट वन प्लस वन बाय एक्स होल्ड टू पार एन एस ए नॉट प्लस ए वन इनटू वन बाय एक्स यस वनो राइट मल्टीप्लाई थ्रू आउट बाय एक्स मल्टीप्लाई थ्रू आउट बाय पार एन इफ आई मल्टीप्लाई दिस बाय एक्स पार एन आई गेट वन प्लस एक्स पार एन That'll be a naught x power n plus a one x power n minus one plus n. Hey, but one plus x power n is this, isn't it? So one plus x power n actually is a naught plus a one x plus a two x squared plus. A three x cube plus a n x power n. Yes or no? This is not an equation. It's an identity. It's an identity, and therefore coefficient of x power n on the left hand side a naught must be equal to coefficient of x power n on the right hand side, which is a n. Coefficient of x power n minus one on the left hand side a one <laughs> must be coefficient of x power n minus one on the right hand side, which would be a. n minus one, a two would be a n minus two and so forth. I didn't have to know that these ARs are actually NCRs. Yes or no? Yes. You just equate of equal parts of x on both sides. You will have a naught equal to a n, a one equal to a n minus one, a two equal to a n minus two, a n equal to a naught, etc. <laughs> Simple, right? Can I write this down? So, in principle, one plus x power n is n c zero plus n c one x plus n c two x squared plus. Which in summation notation would be summation n c r x bar r r runs from zero to. Let's see summation notation for this. Now there are times when they would just drop this. N C zero will simply be written as C zero. N C one will simply be written as C one. N C two will be written as C two. I mean, the moment you see C naught, you actually would would know that it's N C naught. The moment you see C one, you know that it's actually N C one. Therefore, it's customary to write the expansion one plus x bar n as C naught plus C one x plus C two x squared plus C three x cube plus C n x bar n, where please n c zero, c one is one, n c one, c two is n, like really summation c r x bar r r equal to zero to n. Fair enough, right? Got me, no? <laughs> the convention only do this, right? Now,
these c naught c1 c2 c3 etc are called binomial coefficients these crs are called binomial coefficients and is this an equation or an identity it's an identity right now there are some important relationships connecting the binomial coefficients <laughs> Put x equal to one on both sides. Put x equal to one on both sides. You get two to power n equals c naught plus c one plus c two plus c three c n minus one plus c. That means the sum of all binomial coefficients will always be two to power n. Will be two to power n. That's the sum of very commonly used result. Put x equal to minus one on both sides. You get zero as the left hand side equals c naught minus c one plus c two minus c three and so on so forth. That's what you get. Hmm. Which means c naught plus c two plus That means the even coefficients. We call them the even coefficients: zero, two, four, etc. Some of the even coefficients equals some of the odd coefficients: c one plus c three plus c five, and so on and so forth. Right? If a equals b, then e should be half of a plus b, isn't it? Hmm. So if a equals b, each would be half their sum. So each then would be half of this plus this, which would be c naught plus c one plus c two plus c three plus c n. Hey, but c naught plus c one plus c n we've already figured out is two n, right? So this becomes. n divided by 2 which is 2 to the power n one so some of the even coefficients will be equal to odd coefficients each would be equal to 2 to the power n minus 1 These are all regular relationships which you must remember. Now, let me differentiate both sides with respect to x. Let me differentiate both sides with respect. To x. Then I get n into one plus x bar n minus one equals c one plus two c two x plus three c three x squared. R C R X bar R minus one N C N X bar N minus one. That's what I get, right? Which is like okay. So this is also an identity. This is also an identity. Put X equal to one on both sides again. So you end up getting. N into two to the power n minus one. N into two to the power n one equals c one plus two c two plus three c three. N c n is what you get, right? Very important relationship. So the right hand side is very clearly summation R c R. R runs from Even if you take r equal to zero to n, although you know this is r equal to one to n, but even if you took r equal to zero to n, it does not matter because for r equal to zero, it's zero. So you might want to take r equal to one to n or r equal to zero to n. It will give you the same value. 
which is r equal to 0, although it is not included here, it is anyway 0 in the summation, right. So, summation RCR is n into 2 to the power n minus 1, again a very, very commonly used relationship. Can I write this off? In, even from principles, if someone gave you find the value of C1 plus 2C2 plus 3C3 plus 4C4, n minus 1, c n minus 1, n c n. Suppose so this was given to you and you were asked to evaluate this sum s. You could have actually, you could have actually done the following. You could have written this as complete the terms 0 into c 0 for example. Just add 0 into c 0 so, so as to make the complete hmm? and write the terms in the reverse order. Write the terms in the reverse order. This s could have been written as n into c n plus then the second last term n minus 1 c n minus 1 n minus 2 c n minus 2 going this way, 0 into C0. I could have done this, yes or no? Written the terms in the reverse order, reverse order. Reason we did that is because C0 would be compliant with Cn, because C0 is the same as Cn, C1 is the same as n minus 1, so it will be compliant with C n minus 1 and therefore that is the rational of writing it in the reverse order and attempting to add terms equally. Means now, if I add this vertically, then I get 2 times s equals 0 plus n into Cn, right? Let us say C0 is the same as Cn. So, I could take from these two terms C0 common because C0 is the same as Cn plus. From these two, I can take C1 common because C1 is the same as C n minus 1, right? So, I could take C1 common. So, 1 plus n minus 1. So, that would be again n times C1, right? I could add these two. So, that is n and I could take C2 common. So, that would be n C2. Then, I will again get like a n C3. From these two, I can take Cn common. So, Ncn, yes or no? Right? Hmm? This is like n times C0, C1 plus C2 plus Cn. Yes or no? That is 2 times s. Yeah. Hey, but have we been able to work this out? C0 plus C1 plus C2 plus Cn. That is 2 to the power n. That is 2 to the power n. So, this is n into 2 to the power. So, 2s is n into 2 to the power n. S therefore must be n into 2 to the power n minus 1. Summation RCR is n into 2 to the power n minus 1, a very, very important and commonly used relationship. <coughs> Can I write this off? In fact, I will just go one step ahead. Yes, my friends. In nursery, when you entered nursery and you asked your teacher if I have to remember A to Z, 
what would be the answer? This is the A to Z of that nursery that you've started with. Yes, you will have to remember these things. But see, the way it happens is once you get into problem solving, you don't have to memorize. It, it becomes spontaneous with you. I mean, do you remember if you had to actually mug up A, B, C, D, E, F, G? I mean, you don't even know when it came to you. That's how, you know, this will also descend upon you very automatically and spontaneously. I mean, I for one, I don't remember if I ever memorized all this. I mean, some, someone told me this, I start solving problems and then, you know, it was all there. Over a period of time, the, the mental processes inside would automatically take you there. You'll, you'll know. I mean, you once you get a feel for it, it will come to you automatically. But if in the initial stage, you'll have to pitch in that little bit of extra effort, it's all right. I mean, over a period of time, I mean, you would, you would readily see differentiating this with respect to x, n into 1 plus x power n minus 1 and that's summation RCR. So, you'll be able to readily relate to it. It's not like you'll have to mug it up. Now, I'll tell you something, Arnab and you. Uh, your gestures in the class are unacceptable. And I can, it takes me just a fraction of a second to split your ass into many parts. If you think you are a smart ass, you don't have to come to this class. And trust me, no matter how smart you are, come down here, I will rip you into pieces intellectually, academically, mathematically, which you will never be able to reassemble. You will be broken down forever. I hate this. If you think you know it all, why do you have to come to the class? You can jolly well step out of here and fuck out, fuck off from here. But you can't sit there and do nonsense. Come here, tell me any one topic in maths that you are very good and I will fuck the ass out of you. I will just go one step forward. Extend that notion to a summation of the following kind. A summation of this kind where the numbers A0, A1, A2, etc. are in AP. A summation of this kind where a0, a1, we are in arithmetic progression. Right? I want to ask something like this. What do I do? I once again write it in the reverse order. I add, I hope you realize what I did. I just wrote the terms in the reverse order. Add vertically. Who is Saptarshi Mondal? Who is Saptarshi Mondal? Oh, he is in Golpar. Two times S. Two times S. Then, let me add vertically. Now, realize that if A0, A1, A2, A3, An are in arithmetic progression, then sum of terms from the beginning and the end is the same. You know that, right? That means A0 plus An will be the same as A1 plus A minus 1 will be the same as A2 plus An minus 2. Yes or no? A0 plus An will be the same as A1 plus An minus 1. And so on and so forth. 
right let me add these do you also realize that c not is the same as cn so i could take c not common from these from the so i could take c1 common right isn't it because c1 is the same as c n minus 1 From these two, I could take C two common because C two is the same as C n minus two. Right? Yes or no? A naught plus A n is the same. A one plus A n minus one is the same as A two plus A n minus two, and so on and so forth. Right? Which means I could in these terms. Right? So if I took A naught plus A n common, then I am left with C naught plus C one plus C two plus C n. Hey, but what C naught plus C one plus C two plus C n to the power n? That's two times s. So s then would be A naught plus A n to the power n divided by two. Yes or no? Does it make sense to all of you? We we'll start after five minutes. I am having very bad backache. Just now, for the sake of the consumption of the class, when I Expand one plus x bar n as c naught plus c one x plus c two x squared plus c three x cube plus c n x bar n. Then I, I'll call form of expansion as a processed form, as a processed form. Hmm. But when I write c naught c one c two c three c n in the following form. C naught is one. C one is n, as we have seen. N x plus n into n minus one by two factorial was C two, as we saw earlier. C three is n into n minus one into n minus two by three factorial. This kind of a format called a raw format. Expansion. When I write c naught, c one, c two, etc. in one plus n x plus n into n minus one by two factorial, etc. This was, I would call the raw format, right? In this format, the coefficient of x n would actually be the power here. Power here. So you'll have some. Then Will appear in the path. Then something into something minus one by two factorial x squared etc. Then this would be the binomial rhythm. This I would call the binomial rhythm. Now. <coughs> This expression, c1 plus 2c2 plus 3c3 plus 4c4 plus ncn, 
Let me write it in raw format. In raw format. C1, as we have seen, is n, right? 2C2 is 2 into C2 is n into n minus 1 by 2 factorial. C3 is n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 by 3 factorial. up to n terms, right? 1 plus x power something has how many terms? Something plus 1 term, right? Is like n plus n minus 1 into n Plus now factorial is 3 into 2 factorial. So this will become 2 factorial. The cancel will become 2 factorial. This will become 3 factorial. How many such terms? N terms. N terms. This I could write as N into 1 plus N minus 1 into 1. Right? Then N minus 1 into N minus 2 by 2 factorial, right? Up to n terms. Now, this is into 1, this into 1 squared, this I can write as 1 cube and so on so forth. I, I just want you to think really right now, right? See, my raw format of 1 plus x power n was what? 1 plus nx plus n into n minus 1 by 2 factorial x squared. Right? The number of terms were one more than this? Rhythm, the number of terms were one more than this? And this matched with this. 1 plus the power into x plus power into power minus 1 factorial x squared power power minus 1 power minus 2 by 3 factorial x cube up to how many terms? Power plus 1 term. Power plus 1 term. Right? Now, look at this plus power, in this case the power is n minus 1, power into x, right, plus power into power minus 1 by 2 factorial into x squared x to the power, right, plus power into power minus 1 into power minus 2 by 3 factorial and how many terms, n terms, n terms means power plus 1 term, yes or no, this is the power n minus 1 plus 1 would be n, so the number of terms are power plus 1, all everything matches in the binomial rhythm, I will repeat, it is of the form 1 plus power into x is 1 plus power into power minus 1, right, I am treating this as power, power into power minus 1 by 2 factorial x squared into power minus 1 into power minus 2 by 3 factorial 
x cube. How many terms? N terms. N terms is what? Power plus 1. N is power plus 1. This also is the same. 1 plus x to the power n. 1 plus x power power. 1 plus power into x plus power into power minus 1 by 2 factorial x plus power into power minus 1 power minus 2 by 3 factorial x cube. And how many terms? Power plus 1. The only difference between this and this is in this case the power was n. In this case the power must be n minus 1. In this case x was x. In this case x is 1. Yes or no? Right? It fits completely into the binomial rhythm. Yes or no? Right? And therefore, this could be written as n into 1 plus x. x is 1 here. To the power what? n minus 1. Are you all there with me on this? So, this becomes n into 2 to the power n minus 1. Clear or no? Right? You get a hang of it? Right? All of these, you, you should be comfortable with everything that I am saying. The same thing we are doing in multiple ways so that you are mentally acclimatized to all of them. Right? In fact, then one plus x power n as c naught plus c one x plus c two x squared plus c three x cube plus c n x power n. Put x equal to minus 1 on both sides. Put x equal to minus 1 on both sides. So you get like a 0. C naught minus C1 plus C2. Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I have told you this already, right? Okay. Differentiate this with respect to x and then put x equal to minus. Output x equal to minus 1. C1 plus 2, C2 plus 3, C3 x squared plus n C n x power n minus 1. Now put x equal to minus 1 on both sides. The left hand side is still 0. The right hand side is C1 minus 2, C2 plus 3, C3. So, C1 minus T2, C2, 3, C3, etc. minus 1 to power n minus 1, n, C, n. That's 0. <coughs> now, let me look at it in the raw format. Just this expression, without taking recourse to the process format, without differentiating. If someone just gave me this expression and I had to deal with this, what do I do? Right? Independently. Now, from absolutely independent consideration. Right? So, I am talking of a C1 minus 2 C2 plus 3 C3 minus 4 C4, etc. How many terms are there in this? N terms, right? Cn is N terms. Write format. Write it in the raw format. Hey, you can you can move out of the class. You don't have to sit down stooping low. You can walk. C1 is N. C1, like I told you, is N. C2 is N N minus by 
2 factorial c3 is n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 by 3 factorial n such terms let me take n common from this let me take n common from this 1 minus this will simply become n minus 1 3 by 3 factorial this will become 2 factorial How many such terms? N terms. Right? Hmm? Which you could write as N into 1 plus N minus 1 into minus 1. This is N minus 1 into minus 1. n minus 1 into n minus 2 by 2 factorial minus 1 squared. Yes or no? n minus 1 into n minus 2 by 2 factorial into minus 1 squared. Minus 1 cube. How many such terms? n terms. Yes or no? Hmm? Now, 1 plus power into x plus power into power minus 1 by 2 factorial x squared power power minus 1 power minus 2 by 3 factorial x cubed up to how many terms? Power plus 1 term because power is n minus 1 so power plus 1 which is n. Yes or no? So, a full binomial rhythm is available here. So, then this x is minus 1 here and power must be n minus 1. So, this becomes n into 1 plus x which is minus 1 to the power n minus 1. 1 plus x. x is minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 squared etc. 1 plus power into x plus power into power minus 1 by 2 factorial x squared n outside 1 plus x to power n minus. So, which is 0. Are you all okay with this? Right? Can I add this one? Now, one thing, integral 1 plus x power n dx, integral x power dx. Now, if you remember from the algebra of differentials which I covered in the class, d of x plus 1 is actually d of x plus d of 1, but d of 1 is 0. So, this is dx, yes or no? d of x plus 1 is d of, right? So, I can write as d of x plus 1. How about it? So, now this integral is of the form t to the power n dt. t to the power n dt. And this is going to be t to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. Plus a constant of yes or no? Yes. 
if i if i said 1 plus x power n dx 0 to 1 if i said 1 plus x power n dx 0 to 1 that's going to be the value of this at x equal to 1 minus the value of this at x equal to 0. So, c will get cancelled. The value of this at x equal to 1 is going to be 2 to the power n plus 1. At x equal to 0, it is going to be 1 divided by the value of this at x equal to 1 minus the value of this at x equal to 0 will be this. C will get cancelled. Clear? Hmm? Then I have to solve. Hmm. This is an identity. Integrate both sides with respect to x. Integrate both sides with respect to x. Integrate from 0 to 1 both sides. Right? When you do that, then this, like we just saw a little while ago, is 2 to the power n plus 1, 1 divided by n plus 1. That's the left hand side. Now the right hand side. When you integrate c naught with respect to x, you come out. Integral dx 1 from 0 to 1, it will be 1. Yes or no? Plus. In this case, c1x, c1 will come out x square by 2 when you integrate from 0 to 1. Half? No? c2 will come out x cube by 3 when you integrate from 0 to 1, 1 third, right? Similarly, C3 by 4. <laughs> yes or no? Does it make sense to all of you? So, this again. Is a relationship. Remember. Not plus c1 by 2 plus c2 by 3 plus c3 by 4 plus cn by n plus 1. 1 by n plus 1. Okay. Now, without taking recourse to the process form or relation, let me deal with this expression from first principles that is in the raw format, in the raw format. That way, you know, your, your mind will get used to the idea. You will be able to play around with the terms of a binomial expression. That is why I am just this in all possible ways, right? I hope all of you are comfortable with things that I have done so far, right? In the raw format, then this expression c0 plus c1 by plus c2 by by 4 plus cn by n plus 1. Convert in the raw format. Let us convert this to the raw. C naught I can write as 1, right? C1 is n, C2 is n into n minus 1 by 
टू फैक्टोरियल एंड टू फैक्टोरियल एंड टू थ्री वुड बी थ्री फैक्टोरियल सी थ्री इज एन इंटू एन माइनस वन इंटू एन माइनस टू बाई थ्री फैक्टोरियल एंड फोर इंटू थ्री फैक्टोरियल विल बी फोर फैक्टोरियल Now, how many terms in this? N plus one terms. N plus one terms, right? Zero to n is n plus one term. So far, so good, right? Now, take one by n plus one common from this. Take one by n plus one common from this. This would become n plus one. This would become n plus one into n by two factorial. This would become n plus one into n into n minus one by three factorial. How many such terms? N plus one terms. So far, so so no. In the binomial rhythm, the first term should have been one, right? So what I do is by force I add one. By force I add one to this, right? And then I subtract one. This is an isolated one, but this belongs to the family. This one belongs to the family of the binomial rhythm. One plus Something into x plus something into x squared. Now the moment I add one, then how many terms here? N plus two terms. N plus two terms. Yes or no? The number of terms would be one more than the power. So you would expect the power to be n plus one. Yes or no? You would then expect the power of the binomial to be n plus one. Now all that you to perform a check one plus power into x plus power into power minus one by two factorial into x squared plus power into power minus one into power minus two by three factorial into x cube and how many terms power plus one term. Full binomial rhythm is constituted out of this. Yes or no? Where the power would be n plus one and x would be one. Yes or no? Right. Which then leads us to one by n plus one, <coughs> one plus one whole to power n plus one. Yes or no? One plus x, which is one to the power n plus one, and then this is isolated. This is isolated. So, which is like a two to the power n plus one minus one divided by n plus one. Right. So that's the raw format. That's the raw format. Got me? Can I wipe this off? Hmm? Now, one plus x power n. I wrote in ascending parts as c naught plus c one x plus c two x squared plus c three x cube plus c n x power n. That's in ascending parts, right? In descending parts, if I had to write the same thing in descending parts. I have written this as this C n. I write as C naught. So C naught x power n, right? Has power first, right? The term prior to this would be C n minus one. The same as C one. C one x power one. 
c2 x power n minus 2. I hope all of you are there with me. Plus n. Yeah. That's in descending powers of x. Sometimes we want to write it like this. Sometimes we want to write it like this. In ascending powers of x, this is in descending power. Now, a useful implication of the same in the sheet, this is not necessarily a result that you want to remember, but if you do so, it, it will not harm you. Uh, look at 10 part 1. Cn squared, we want to show it's 2n factorial by n factorial whole square. Now, the way to bring about these terms, see, it, it would, as, as beginners, you would think it's a challenge to accommodate c naught 1 squared, c2 squared, etc. What do we do? In all these cases, the first step is to close your eyes and then open them and write 1 plus x power n. The expansion of 1 plus x power n. Which is like c1x plus, plus c3x cube plus cnx power n. Yes or no? Write the same thing in descending powers of x. Write the same thing in descending powers of x. Right? One thing which figured out is in the expansion of 1 plus x power n, the coefficient of x power r is n c r, yes or no? In the expansion of 1 plus x power n, the coefficient of x power r would be n c r. Keep that in mind. Also. Multiply these two. 1 plus x power 2 n is what you get. Hmm? That is equal to c naught plus c1x plus c2x squared plus c3x cube plus cnx power n into c naught x power n this is an identity which is really an Identity, yes or no? Hmm? Now, the reason I had to multiply them was because I am seeking a C naught squared, C1 squared, C2 squared, C n squared. Now, when I multiply this with this, then do you realize that I get a this into this as C naught squared x power n? Then, this into this as C1 squared x power n? This into this as c2 squared x power n, yes or no? It means this sum, this sum s on the right hand side, this sum s on the right hand side appears as coefficient of x power. This sum s on the right hand side appears as coefficient of x power n. There will be other powers of x, that is another issue, but this, you know, there will be terms here, but the coefficient of x power n on the right hand side would be c naught squared plus c1 squared plus c2 squared plus cn squared. That would be the coefficient of x power n on the right hand side, yes or no? Coefficient of x power n, have I confused you? I, I little bothered with this now. So, multiply, then c naught squared, c1 squared, c2 squared, cn squared would appear as coefficient of x power n on the 
right hand side right and coefficient of x power n on the right hand side that is this s must be equal to coefficient of x power n on the left hand side right s which is coefficient of x power n on the rhs must be equal to coefficient of x power n on lhs yes or no hmm? what is lhs 1 plus x power 2n so that means this s must be coefficient of x power n in 1 plus x power 2n must be coefficient of x power n in 1 plus x power 2n yes or no right now coefficient of x power r is what power pr coefficient of x power r here would be what the power pr yes or no coefficient of x power r here would be what power c r so coefficient of x power n would be power c n yes or no yes or no so this is going to be 2n c n yes or no coefficient of x power r here would be power cr coefficient of x power r here is going to be power cr but what we are seeking is coefficient of x power n that's going to be power c n yes or no that's s the sum that we are seeking that's s the sum that we are seeking clear yeah. 2n c n evidently is 2n factorial by 2n minus n which is n factorial into n factorial which is 2n factorial by n factorial square yes or that's it does it make sense to you or not hmm? so sometimes to bring uh, such terms you might want to multiply 1 plus x power n by expanding it in two different ways like two different ways you might want to do that yeah <laughs> Let me discuss variants to this. <coughs> mm. Let me look at. I hope all, you comfortable thing that I am saying. Mm. Let me look at n part four. Like I told you, in all these cases, the first thing that you should do is close your eyes. Obviously, the second thing, open them and write 1 plus x power n, right?
This is an ascending power of x. Write the same thing in descending power of x. Yes or no? Now, having said this, look at what is being sought here. C naught C R. Look at this. The C naught source from here and C R source from here. C naught C R X part. I hope all of you understand how. And at both, right? C naught, C R, X bar, N minus R would be a term, right? C one, C R plus one, X bar, N minus R once again. Why? Into X bar, N minus R minus one would be X bar, N minus R, right? So that C one into C R plus one, X bar, N minus R. C two x squared. See this C two. C r plus two. R plus two would have n minus r minus two, and n minus r minus two into x squared would be x square. It would be x bar n minus r. So again, C two C r plus one r plus two into x bar n minus r. Yes or no? I mean, see all these terms, all these terms in the required summation n. Third, coefficient of x bar n minus r appear as coefficient of x bar n minus r. Yes or no? So then this is like number of terms, and then you have c naught c r plus c one c r plus one etc. The required summation surfacing as coefficient of x bar n minus r on the right hand side. Yes, n minus r. Right hand side, yes or no? Right. So this is what we are seeking, and how has it appeared on the right hand side? Coefficient of x bar n minus r, and coefficient of x bar n minus r on the right hand side must be equal to coefficient of x bar n minus r on the left hand side. So this summation is, which is coefficient of x bar n minus r on the right hand side. Must also be coefficient of x bar n minus r on the left hand side. 
left hand side n plus x bar 2n thing as coefficient of x bar n minus r we left hand side yes or no and coefficient of x bar t would be 2 2n ct would be 2n c t would be the coefficient of x bar t the coefficient of x bar t in this expansion would be what 2n ct so coefficient of x bar n would be 2n c n minus r right yes or no right which is like 2n factorial by 2n is this factorial and 2n minus this factorial would be n plus r factorial yes or no n minus r does it make sense to all of you right Yeah. Again, without losing sight. One plus x bar n. C no. C one x plus C two x squared plus C three x cube plus C n x bar n. Let me replace x by x by a. Replace x by x by some a. Right. So then one plus x by a hold bar n is C not plus C one into x by a. We multiply by a to power n. Let me multiply both sides. By a to power n. Yes or no? This is the more generalized binomial theorem. So a plus x par n would be c not a par n c one a par n minus one x c two a par n minus two x squared c n x par n. So the peculiarity of the terms here is that if you look at look at any term and add the powers of x and a, it will be n. See what's the power of a here? N. What's the power of x here? Zero. Add the two parts. N. What's the power of a here? What's the power of x here? Add the two parts. What's the power of a here? Power of x. Add the two parts. Power of a zero. Power of x n. Add the two n. So in all these terms, the sum of the powers of a and x will be n. The index n. So this, in a more general sense, you want to write as summation. N C R a to power n minus r x power r, where r runs from zero to n, n plus one term. Right? I can't stand anymore. I'm having a lot of pain. I have to stop here.